Hi, my name is Philip Salmony. I'm a current engineering undergraduate at the University of Cambridge and also vice president and head of control for the Cambridge University Unmanned Air Systems Society. We aim to enter the annual UAS challenge in 2019, which is an unmanned air systems challenge where universities all over the UK compete. And we need to present, um, build and design a completely autonomous drone. Um, my job is to create and design the control systems, the autonomous navigation, and also do part of the electronics. Now, to aid us in designing the control systems, because we didn't want to do um, things where we just buy things off the shelf, for example, a Pixhawk, we wanted to design our own sophisticated control systems, and uh, we needed a tool to simulate and to test our control designs. So in the, the past two weeks, I've been spending on making a complete six degree freedom uh, autonomous drone simulator. Uh, I chose Unity because it was quite easy to visualize it and c -sharp is quite a fairly high level language. So I would like to just guide you through what I've done and, and I will also attach a document to this, to this video which describes how I've done, how I've implemented some of the systems. So let me just give you a brief introduction to this. So I call it UAV sim for obvious reasons. So let me just start right here. Okay, so as you can see, we have a large field here with the drone middle. This is kind of a, a rough design of what our drone will look like for 2019. It's a um, fixed wing aircraft, single propeller. It's uh, similar to the Aerosond uh, UAV. So we have the 3D visualization here. It's simulating a six degree freedom um, system that calculates aerodynamic forces and moments. And OK, so right now at the bottom left, you can see the measurements, which are the latitude, longitude, altitude, airspeed, angle of attack, side slip, roll pitch and yaw. So the attitude of the aircraft. Right now, we've got it in autonomous mode. We also have assisted, which is basically a fly by wire system, which is using uh, control systems. And manual is directly controlling the servos. In autonomous mode, you can set the state the idle, which is basically a control input takeoff cruise, which is what it's doing right now, where you can set an altitude and an airspeed, loiter, where it'll just circle in a particular radius, waypoint, which is waypoint navigation, and land, finally. So if we're just in cruise mode, we can set the altitude, let's say, uh, just random step input to 343 meters. The control systems aren't tuned yet, so I just put a rough uh, proportional integral derivative controllers in. You see there's a bit of overshoot, slight oscillation, as you can see, is not tuned. In cruise mode, you can also set the roll angle, which is desired. So let me just bank left so we don't reach the edge of our field. We can also set the airspeed, so from 50, for example, into 55, and you can see the control reacts. Okay, so that was cruise mode. So let me just put it into assisted mode. So as I said before, this is basically our full control. And basically, I'm controlling the set points of the controllers. Uh, so these controls at the bottom don't work anymore. I can also set it in manual mode, which is direct control of the servos. As you can see, it is less controlled now. This is basically if you were to connect an RC controller directly to the servos, is what is this simulating. I can also load different aircraft setups here, which I can define in a file, which I'll show you right now. So uh, I can define different uh, parameters. For example, if we use a DATCOM simulation, uh, I can put in the aircraft geometry and then get out the aerodynamic coefficients and control derivatives and load these into my program. So the format I've done it is basically you have the thing, what you can't read is it thinks it's a comment. So it's some mass and inertia terms, geometry terms, the longitude or aerodynamic coefficients, lateral aerodynamic coefficients, proportion, also the environment parameters, depending on what. Uh, settings you would like. So you can see they have wingspan, um, chord area, uh, efficiency factors, we have the inertia terms, mass, and so on. And all of that can be pretty much extracted from DATCOM or any or AVL or some program like that, and then directly loaded into the simulator using this load aircraft configuration, which will then pass that file. Furthermore, uh, you can also use the controller setup panel to change the, the gains and filters on the fly for the controllers. Um, so let's go back into the simulation. So let me just put it into manual mode. 
So again, we have direct control of the servos. We can also set initial conditions. So in some cases, we want to see what this what is the response at different altitudes, different velocities, additional initial velocities. We do that right here. So if I say an altitude of a thousand meters, a forward velocity of fifty meters per second, and we've initial roll of fifteen degrees, and we're starting it in autonomous uh, cruise mode. So if I set that, you can see the controllers react quite quickly because we've set it back to cruise mode, and it'll start going back to the hundred meters altitude. But it has started from the initial conditions. So we can see the response to different changes in that. So let me change it back into manual mode. And now let's look at the trim function. The trim function essentially solves an optimization problem using gradient descent. It tries to find an equilibrium and equilibrium state, equilibrium influence. So we say, I don't know, for example, 35 meters per second at zero degrees flight path angle and a turn radius of 200 meters. We can also set the initial position and we choose trim. It solves the optimization problem and gives us these, uh, for example, earlier on elevated rudder deflections and also the thrust value. Then we uh, close the window and we can see it's in a trimmed state. We are at a constant airspeed, constant altitude, and we're flying at, uh, I think it was 250 meters turn radius. We can also, if we put this back into um, assisted mode, so we can also change the wind settings. Of course, this simulates quite an ideal scenario where there's no wind, but we would like to enable the wind and possibly increase the turbulence a bit. We can also have a static wind field in the northeast and down directions, uh, inertial that is. So we set that, we can see there's quite a strong wind acting on this and also trying to test our uh, control systems. So this will aid uh, real life simulations. And this also uh, will change depending on altitude and airspeed. It uh, is based on the Dryden uh, wind coefficient. So we're basically generating random noise and then filtering that using um, uh, several filters. I, again, I will attach um, the, all the description of what I've done and how I've programmed this in a, in a separate, separate PDF file to this video. So, um, so let's just turn wind off for the moment and let's go back into manual mode. Um, so again, let's, let's just find uh, the trim condition. So let's do that again and we see we're back into our, so uh, once we've find, found an equilibrium point using the trim command, we can, for example, linearize this data, linearize around this operating point. So if I press linearize, I'll just save this as a text file. Now, if I go to my desktop, I can open this text file, and this will basically linearize the system using numerical methods. It'll give me the linearized uh, about which point, operating point, we linearize the system. So the states, north, east, down, velocities, and so on. Also the linearized inputs. And it'll give me the state-based model. So the complete safety model with the A, B, C, and D matrices, uh, the MATLAB description. So I basically copy-paste this into MATLAB, and it'll I can perform some control analysis on it, for example. Furthermore, if, if one is not comfortable with multivariable control systems, um, the transfer function is also calculated. For example, aileron to roll angle uh, is given here, and these can also be directly copied into MATLAB to perform analysis or to simulate, for example. So going back into the simulator, um, another thing we can do is we can, you know, for example, let's put it into assisted cruise and now let's log the flight data. So we start logging, it'll record all the states across all time into a comma separated format, which we can then load into MATLAB to look at how, for example, the controllers respond to a step change. So let me just fly around here. You can also put in autonomous mode, it'll continue recording. So, so as you can see, your controllers are not properly tuned, there's a lot of overshoot and wobbling going on, but this is the initial stage. So, so if we just put in a, a rather a weird step. All right, I stop logging and I will save the flight data. All right. So I have my flight data here. I also have MATLAB open. So let me just drag that over here. I can use, I've made a little file which basically just extracts the data and puts it into graphs. So let's process that. 
And so you can do some post-process analysis. You can see the trajectory here. Uh, airspeed, uh, that changes depending on the set point, as you can see. It fluctuates a bit depending on what our pitch angle inputs were and so on. You can see all the control inputs, the side slip, attitude, and so on. So it's a neat way of seeing how your controllers respond. Okay, so going back. Um, so another thing is, um, we also, in the competition, we need to follow waypoints autonomously. So I've put in a mode here which lets you program in the right little script to follow waypoints. So let's just say I would like to load some waypoints from a file. Waypoints.txt. Okay, and now I can put it into waypoint mode. Uh, there's a line drawn, it's a bit flickery, I need to fix that, but there's a line drawn which shows the direction from the drone to the next waypoint. The next waypoint is highlighted in blue. All these spheres are waypoints. And as you see, it'll start, this is a simple line following algorithm which I just wrote uh, very briefly just to demonstrate. Of course, more um, advanced things will be invented soon. But the UAV sim is currently in a very early state. All right, so uh, the radius of the sphere shows what tolerance we have on the waypoints. So in what radius do we need to be for it to register it being past that waypoint? So once we've hit the waypoint, it turns green, and then we fly onto the next waypoint, which is highlighted in blue. And it'll continue that doing through all the waypoints. So let me just show you how uh, the waypoint file is defined. So it can be any format, uh, text format. Again, comments are ignored. We can say we want our target airspeed to 50 meters a second, target altitude to 200 meters, uh, the waypoint tolerance in this case is 50 meters, and then we can define waypoints. So it's northeast altitude, and if altitude is not defined, it will just use the, the default altitude set up here. If it is defined, it'll then overwrite that for that particular waypoint. So it's a quite easy system to implement and to then load in different waypoints. Um, other than that, I plan to, so this is a very early state of UAV sim, I plan to include different sensor configurations. So you, of course, sensors will have noise, lots of gyroscopes yeah. will have some sort of bias and uh, extra random noise on it, uh, such as accelerometers. And uh, we'd also like to implement state estimation because, yeah. of course, in real life, you won't have all the states available to you. So you'll only have to use things such as carbon filters to uh, recover the states. Um, so you can use them in your control systems. Right now, I would also like to, uh, all the controllers are pretty much hard coded into the code so uh, it would be nice to basically load them in through xml or through some other format so you can input other designs without having to recompile the code every time but this is basically um two weeks of work and i hope to continue soon again i will leave a pdf file in the description so you can see how i've implemented this great thank you for watching